What the fuck are you doing? Oh, have you dropped your ball, you knobhead? Elbow! Oh, no, you haven't dropped it. It's literally hanging on the edge for dear life. Visuals and... Have you dropped it now? Ah, oh, yeah, fuck it, you're a bastard. And hello, once again, visuals. Welcome back to Pokemon Thursday, the day of the week where we like to get fucking talking about how annoying my dog is. I love you too, pal. It looks like you're trying to fucking, I don't know, bully me or do some sort of... Don't stand proud with your muscles like you're, like you're the dominant one here. I am the alpha male. You're just a saggy prick. Sorry, it is Pokemon Thursday and it's time for another uh, Pokemon team for a certain comic booky superhero -y character. Who, to anybody that we think's awesome and badass or anime character, we've been doing a, lot, a few anime ones, haven't we? Uh, anybody that's just a super duper awesome badass character and we're going to give them a Pokemon team. On a, at the time of recording, I'm recording this after the season finale of Loki, uh, and um, uh, it's, we've had the Marvels and everything. I've had a really good day today so far. Um, we're in honor of that the Loki season two uh, show. We're going to do it all on Loki because Loki is quite an in-depth, three-dimensional, um, <sighs> sad character in some respects. So that's why I've included a, a couple of sad Pokemon on this list. And I've Cheers, pal! I thought it'd be awesome to do Loki. Like I said, there's a few awesome Pokemons you can give with him. I'm going to do a little bit of a cross uh, sort of one between the Norse mythology Loki and our traditional comic book Loki. I'm going to sort of combine the two with a couple of the Pokemon we get in this. But visuals, it's Loki's Pokemon team. Like I always say in these videos, please, you extremely more intelligent, much more badass people. Get in the comments below and score me and correct me and why this team should be slightly changed, why you would include a certain different Pokemon for the reasons why. You guys always have fucking stupidly beautiful answers. I fucking love the answers that you bring up. I'm more like the lines of, uh, I've got Bulbasaur because he's got grain and Loki wears grain. That's his poke. I'm that kind of dumb dumb. You guys are much more articulate and much more insightful and much more, um, even even when I'm doing this, I don't know what the next part of this I should say. You just you just get it. I'm a dum dum that wants gum gum. Visuals, are we ready to take a look at Loki and what six Pokemon I've given him? So visuals, here we go. Here's Loki and his six Pokemon. This one's nice and simple and easy and self-explanatory. It's Zoroark. We've we've got to chuck a Zoroark in there. We know Loki being who he is, he can um somewhat shape shift and change we've seen him turn into cap briefly like for example cap cap briefly like for example for cap uh, a little bit in for the dark world we know he can you know illusions he can do a lot of weird illusion shenanigans and we know zoroark can be a little a bit of a tricky uh illusionary little fucker so the two together as a combination works so well that one is self-explanatory zoroark shape shift and illusion he carry on loki shape shifty illusion he carry on easy we're actually breaking it down a little bit more and getting a little bit more in depth right we know loki is the god of mischief uh he is very mischievous i had to work out and quickly look who is the most mischievous pokemon and according to the websites that i've looked at it's mischievous mischievous is an extremely extremely mischievous pokemon now i would be happy because i like the idea again of a young loki i can see it now in the halls uh, of, of of the palace on asgard and stuff i can see them running down the hallways causing like ah oh, there's four coming now let's play a prank let's do a trick mischievous there giggling away setting up i don't know whatever it's ghost shenanigans i literally i could it all plays out in my head and it works perfectly but i I guess you could swap this for a few other ghost type Pokemon. We've we've seen like the Gengars and the Gases and the Haunters and stuff uh, being quite mischievous and whatnot. Plus having a a dead spirit wandering around with him. Loki seems like that kind of kid. You know when you're at school, if you were younger, you'd be like. Oh, Loki's easy. He's brought his weird little ghost again. We're just sat here swapping, I don't know, match attacks or some shit. And, and he's over there chat chilling with a ghost. That's a bit weird. But, like, he wouldn't care because that's his best pal now. Up to mischief, pulling pranks on people. It just, to me, like I said, when I play out like a like a comic book or 
a short little animation in the style of Pokemon if you want and seeing him run around you know there's Heimdall let's go play a trick on Heimdall we'll run it we'll run down the rainbow bridge and ah Heimdall blood trick mischievous and know, chuck some water on something I don't know it just literally though whilst I've been chatting there just close your eyes and picture it in the in the art style in the animation Loki feeling lonely and whatnot but a mischievous a mischievous mischievous comes and finds him one day and they can create mischief mischief together and I really like that idea uh, but like I said there's a few other goals type Pokemon you could chuck into that argument right I've also like I kind of briefly just explained for mischievous there I've always seen and I, I think Loki is a, a bit of a lonely character we know that he's not originally an Asgardian um, you know he's a frost giant and he's always seemed a little bit isolated on his own and as much as he wants to be like sometimes a center of attention and you know destroying this or being in control of this or being a ruler of this he always seems like he's lonely and he hasn't, he, he can't find his purpose and whatnot. So, I feel like I've got to chuck a Cubone in this team. Why? Well, Cubone's definitely, a, Mimikyu and stuff is, yes, is a lonely Pokemon and stuff. Um, but Cubone is the loneliest of lonelies for me. There's a lot of arts. I think even the original cards and whatnot, you get that sort of vibe off him. It's wearing the skull of its dead mother. It's lost its way in life. It's lost its purpose. And I think quite often Loki, we've seen him before in comic books, even in the MCU, feeling like he's, he's looking for what's his purpose. The Loki series did actually a good job of explaining this. What is his purpose? Uh, what does he really want? Who is he? Where is he going in life? Is he just sort of stagnant and stood still? Has he got a grander... You know, all of this kind of stuff. And I could see him, again, imagine it in your head, him and maybe Mastrevious wandering along somewhere and they see a crying Cuban on its own all alone. And I could see him looking at it and relating and seeing a bit of himself inside of it and having it on his team as a constant reminder. Then maybe one day he can evolve it into a Mar Marowak once. It, it could be like a symbolism for Loki truly being who he is or where he is or what he wants to be and feeling he's in the right place with the people that he wants to be with and stuff. Uh, and, and they could sort of get their loneliness and cure it together. So on that, I, I, I like that idea. Next up, of course, I had to chuck a four uh, element to this, and it's thunderous. I went for thunderous purely because I had to get who's a good representation of four. And for me, in terms of Pokemon, there's, there is a few you could argue, but thunderous is probably the best for me. He's up in the clouds. He's, you know, flying about. He has literally a cloud and whatnot. Um, and he, yeah, he's, he feels godlike and, you know, he's a legendary and stuff. Four, if he was a Pokemon, for example, he would be a god legendary tier sort of Pokemon. Um... But yeah, we know how much Loki may not show it sometimes, may not act like it sometimes, but he truly loves his brother. We remember that scene from uh, season one of Loki where we hear a bit of thunder and stuff in the background and he looks, because usually what comes with it, it's his brother, but he's looking, he's like, he's not coming this time, it's just r regular thunder. And he's a bit, you know... Um, sad and again back to the keyboard a bit lonely in the in the situation but if he had this constant thunderous with him it would be the constant reminder that his brother will always be with him somewhere i'm getting very sentimental and emotional this one aren't i he will always be with him he'll always you know his brother will always have his back he'll always have his brother's back and this thunderous would be a perfect representation of constantly having a four with him next up we've gone with Kyrum. Now we know like, what the fuck's going on here. I wanted a uh, a badass dragon on the team anyway. In fact, now this is the what, we've got another one after this. But we'll get to that in a sec. Um, we know that Loki's originally from Jotunheim. He's a frost giant and all that. Carry on, blue skin, the red eyes, and all that crack. And we've seen Kyrum in some very cool, scary, ice, dark sort of rah, sort of rah 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 situations and shit but i love the idea of maybe they go to jotunheim one day and all the frost giants are gone loki's the last one but before you get to this cold completely isolated cut himself off from everybody a different loki that's collected this team uh, maybe it's just him and his Kyrum left, but he's sat there on some sort of throne. You get close, but all of a sudden out of the corner, a Kyrum slowly creeps its way over, looking at you all the way till it gets itself behind Loki. Loki's on his throne, his Kyrum's behind him. And I don't know, it just works. The ice typings there, the frost, the frost giant, Jotunheim, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we had to have an ice Pokemon with this anyway. Plus, when I was thinking of ice Pokemon, I was like, I couldn't just chuck like an ice cube in there. Lapras doesn't really work for us. Alolan Sand Slash, not, no thank you. But Chiron w w works. Like imagine now a comic book cover. And like I said, you've just got that. You've got 
an ice throne it's dark it's only lit up by a bit of moonlight and you can see like snow and that falling down and there's loki on the throne head down with some sort of scepter or staff and a kyrim chilling behind him it just works and it looks beautifully plus if you didn't want it to go down this cold and dark and horrible route of you know going back to the world of frost giants and going to Jotunheim and stuff he could again have this kyrim as a constant reminder of what he is you know maybe he doesn't want to revert back to that wholeheartedly but he doesn't want to forget who he truly is and that is a frost giant from Jotunheim and stuff and that Chiron could be another constant reminder of who he's trying to be and but but honoring who he is and you know where he started and bringing it all full circle for him Next up, it is Zygarde. I definitely, this is where we get more, more Norse mythology here. I can't remember, I have written it down, but I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Zygarde's based on Jorman, Jormongdor. Uh, it's the, the, the world or the tree serpent. In Norse mythology, they have the tree, don't they? Um, and you've got like Xerneas as a representation on there. Yvel all. And I think when Ragnarok happens, it's when, uh, the, the serpent, um, and four take each other out, if I remember my Norse mythology correctly. Um, and, and this is the son uh, of Loki, the serpent, Jorman Nagnar there, is the actual son of Loki. I think it's like his middle child or somebody. Um, and I love that representation because I do love Norse mythology. I, you know, I loved Vikings and stuff and whatnot, as in the TV show and the actual real life historical Vikings. But, and to hear all these cool stories and whatnot. And I absolutely love that. We, of course, we would keep Zygarde in his, in his snaky boy, uh, form, how we find him in the thingy cave in, uh, the, um, Kalos region. Uh, we wouldn't make him go all transformery power rangers. He would stay serpent boy because it's, you know, it's the, it's the world serpent and stuff. And again, it's his kid in Norse mythology. It's an easy one to go for. It's a legend and a story based around this actual character of Loki and stuff. The two intertwine. It's got the green element. I knew I'd get green in there. See, at the start when I was being dumb, dumb going, I like green. Loki's green. It's green. I got the green in there. I had to do the two. So there we go. Visuals, Zygarde. It's his actual real life son. I think it's his son. It's not a daughter. It's his real life kid uh, and it's in the world of Pokemon. So how could I not integrate the two? There we go, visuals. That is my team for Loki. Hope they're all spread out down the bottom somewhere looking absolutely lovely. Some of the animation gifts I, I can I get are absolutely horrible. They're all pixelated. I, I can only get some that look amazing. Some of them, like I said, are really, really bad. What are you crying for, dog? Do you need wee wee? Better go uh, do the outro and, and let dog up. But there's this team. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I, I really think this team absolutely works. Yes, there's a couple of hit and misses. Uh, you might, you could maybe debate me on Mischievous and stuff. Or even the Zygarde element. Maybe you think we should have just kept it to comic book Loki as opposed to just Norse before. Because I don't think, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if they ever mentioned that whole relationship in comic book version Loki. I don't think anyway. Um, but anyway, it's still a low-key reference and all that carry-on. But I really think it's, it's it works perfect. Like I said, imagine a lot of them scenarios, the comic book cover with Kyrim, the halls uh, uh, of, the, of the palace and Asgard going down with Mysterious, playing pranks on Odin, or, uh, you know, the Warriors free, or Valkyrie's there and he's winding her up, her, him and Mysterious and stuff. Just play it out in your head. For me, it works so well and so perfect. I, I adore this team for Loki. But what do you think? Visuals, that was my team for Loki. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you guys are literally the fucking best. I am coming, dog. I'm just saying bye. You have a wee in a sec. Uh, thank you for watching, visuals. You guys literally best. We'll just keep being you and keep on uh, keeping on.